space. The final frontier. Or is it? Remember the words of the USS Enterprise Captain Jean-Luc Picard? Of those familiar with Star Trek, few haven't dreamt about taking the helm and rushing forward to explore the endless space, seducing alien beauties of all colors and shapes on the way. Brainframe follows the dream as well, but we always reinforce fantasy with facts. Therefore, today we will talk about space programs that will change our understanding of the universe in the near future. We will observe the stars and look for exoplanets through a telescope in the crater of the moon. We'll explore the sun and try not to burn in its crown. We'll check to see if everything is ready for the construction of the lunar base and find out what frightens Elon Musk on Mars. By the way, write in the comments which space missions you consider the greatest and why. Now, fasten your seatbelts and let us boldly go where no man has gone before. The Dark Side of the Moon bears with it many myths and meanings. For some, it's a favorite album, but for others, it's the location of a secret Third Reich base. For NASA experts, this is the place to build the largest telescope in the solar system. Our favorite space agency is funding the development of a telescope that will be built in a kilometer-wide crater on the dark side of the moon. What for? You're about to find out. But first, let's take a closer look at this beauty. The Lunar Crater Radio Telescope is an ultra-long wavelength radio telescope. Designed as a wire mesh, it will be placed in a crater two to three miles wide on the far side of the moon. It will be built by robots, of course, NASA do-axle rovers, or climbing robots, will pull a wire mesh of 0.62 miles in diameter through the crater. The telescope platform will be fixed in the center of the crater and will open like a blooming flower, and do-axle robots will deploy a wire mesh to get a suitable depth to diameter ratio. Thus, the grid will act as a spherical reflector. Why bother so much and why are ordinary telescopes worse than the moon ones? The ionosphere is to blame. It affects ground-based telescopes, limiting their wavelengths to less than 10 meters. LCRT, however, will allow observations in the wavelength range from 10 to 50 meters. It will not be affected by any interference experienced by terrestrial telescopes. The same ionosphere, noise from radio sources and satellites orbiting the Earth. Even radio interference from the sun will not affect observations on a moonlit night. LCRT will allow astronomers to explore space like never before. It will help scientists shed new light on the cosmic processes that took place more than 13 billion years ago, when the first stars in the universe were born, and to examine the small details of exoplanets orbiting other stars. Perhaps we will look so far that we will see how Rick and Morty ends. Press like if you're into this show too. If you don't love it, press like anyway just out of spite. Remember Icarus? No, not Netflix's documentary on doping in sports. It's a character in ancient Greek mythology who soared into the sky having put on wings of feathers and wax. Ignoring the advice of his wise father Daedalus, Icarus flew too close to the sun. The result? The wax melted and the unfortunate pilot crashed to the ground. The Parker Solar Probe certainly does not want to repeat the fate of the boy, although it is one of the most daring space missions ever launched. The cutting-edge scientific technology of the probe is protected by a carbon composite heat shield of 11 centimeters thick, which can withstand temperatures of almost 1,400 degrees Celsius. A little better than wax and feathers, right? Since the launch in 2018, the probe has passed near the sun four times and will do it 20 more times over the next six years, sending data about the hottest and most dangerous objects in the solar system. Parker's earliest discoveries reveal the secret origins of energy particles that make up the solar wind, which floods the interplanetary space. Parker still has a lot of flybys to do around the sun. It needs to cross the border of the solar corona, beyond which lies the place that no one has ever seen. This is gonna be hot. If you think this video is also hot, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell button so you don't miss any of our fresh content. At least, some stability in difficult times like these. So, who will send us on a long journey to the stars? We think you already know the answer. Elon Musk, of course. The restless inventor and flamethrower enthusiast has registered his SpaceX project into NASA's commercial crew program. 
A few years ago, the space agency selected SpaceX and Boeing to develop a new spacecraft for delivering astronauts to the ISS and vice versa. SpaceX has redesigned its Dragon cargo capsule, which has been delivering cargo to the ISS for years, into a vehicle capable of transporting people. After six years of development, successes and failures in testing, the capsule is finally ready to conduct its first passengers in-flight tests. SpaceX has an interesting new technology in the manned version of the Dragon capsule. Like the current Dragon cargo, the Dragon 2 capsule will be launched by the Falcon 9 rocket, which can land on Earth after sending the second stage into space. Dragon 2 will have space for seven astronauts, and NASA has already contracted for six flights with the crew on the ISS. In May 2020, Dragon 2 will deliver two astronauts to the ISS, marking the first time that people have flown on an American spaceship since Space Shuttle. We need to hold on to Elon, friends, because someday he'll finish his business on Earth and return to his planet. Pushing competitors with hammer and sickle, China confidently bursts into the space race. The eastern giant has long wanted to be in the same league with the United States and Russia when it comes to space exploration. The first Chinese astronaut took off in 2003. To date, there are already 12 astronauts, some of whom were sent to the Chinese space station Tiangong-1, which circled the Earth from 2011 to 2018, before falling from orbit over the South Pacific and burning up in the atmosphere. And China doesn't stop there. Its lunar program started in 2007, when it sent its first spacecraft into orbit of the moon to collect data on its geography. And in early 2019, the Chang'e 4 automatic interplanetary station with the U-22 lunar rover aboard made the first ever soft landing on the far side of the moon. U-2 collects soil samples to find materials knocked out of the upper layers of the lunar mantle, which will help shed light on the geological history of the Earth's satellite. But the most interesting thing lies in the bowels of Chang'e 4. Among the cargo was a mini biosphere weighing 2.6 kilograms, called the Lunar Micro Ecosystem LME. The sealed stainless steel cylindrical biosphere is only 18 centimeters long and 16 inches in diameter. Despite its small size, the biosphere marks a big step for scientists, since this is the first biological growth experiment in history to be carried out on the Moon. Among the millions of terrestrial organisms, only six were selected for the experiment with LME cotton, tomato, grapeseed, yeast, fruit fly eggs, and Arabdopsis thaliana, a small flowering plant that is widely used as a model organism in plant biology. The samples were contained inside the biosphere until conditions close to terrestrial, the only difference being lunar microgravity and radiation. The mini biosphere maintained an air pressure of one atmosphere and a constant temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. What else do you need to bloom? Unfortunately, almost all the samples died except cotton that did sprout and the first life on the moon was recorded. The success of these missions pushed China to an even more ambitious project. The head of China's National Space Administration says the country plans to set up a research station at the South Pole of the Moon in about 10 years. The South Pole of the Moon Sea, which U-22 was just exploring, is considered an ideal place to build a base, since there is ice in the shaded craters and higher elevations are caressed by the sun more than anywhere else on the satellite. Working ahead of the curve, China plans to send people to the moon by 2025. If the states don't hurry, then by 2030, the far side of the moon may turn into another iPhone production plant. And there's no rest for us either. Right now, SpaceX is conducting initial tests on a spaceship originally titled simply Starship. The company hopes that one day, Starship will be able to fly into space, refuel in space, and restart using a special mixture of hydrogen and methane instead of the rocket fuel that SpaceX rockets currently use. The first starting tests will be conducted in 2020. By 2022, it should reach Mars. By 2022, Earth and Mars will line up in a way that the moment will be ideal for sending a rocket from one planet to another. Too much ifs. But if we are lucky and the Mars launch is successful, the first colonies on the planet will begin appearing pretty soon. Musk claims that to support life on Mars, 1,000 spaceships and a million tons of vitamin C will be required. Otherwise, you will die slowly and painfully. Thank you, Elon. A couple boxes of oranges are already hidden on the ship. SpaceX plans to launch three starships per day, with 100 passengers on board each for 10 years to deliver the necessary materials, equipment, food, water, and personnel to complete this seemingly impossible task. 
According to the calculations of the genius, all this should happen in 2050. And Brainframe will certainly live up to this moment and talk about it, because we know the secret of immortality. Don't believe us? Watch our video about it in the pop-up. Will we conquer the universe? Can we survive on other planets? Will we meet intelligent life? No one knows. Earth may well just be a reality TV show, watched by the idle inhabitants of the dog constellation. But we know for sure that now there are technologies that allow us to look beyond the impossible. Because as Captain Jean-Luc Picard said, sir, Things are only impossible until they're not. Yes, sir. Write in the comments if we missed any important space mission. Or if you want more videos about space, we won't remind you about the fact that you can like, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell to keep abreast of new videos. You're adults. You know all this stuff. That's all for today. And remember, always think outside the frame. Brain Frame out. Control to Major Tom.